This is Taza, a knowledge series brought to you by Alliance for Coffee Excellence and Cup of Excellence. Um, okay, shall we start? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, so my name is Alex and I work for ACE, uh, the Alliance for Coffee Excellence. I do education coordination for them. Um, I am here today um, talking with the truly amazing Sarah Allen of Barista Magazine. Um, Sarah is definitely a leader in our community and Ace wanted to reach out to her um, and talk with Sarah about uh, how baristas and how um, cafe culture is handling the COVID-19 outbreak in the world right now. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Alex. Um, so I wanted to start today um, by asking you, I feel like there's so much kind of sad and awful news going on and you hear so many negative things that are happening because of um, COVID-19. Um, can you tell us um, if there is anything, um, do you see like any sort of silver lining from this and um, what's going on in the barista world that's positive? Um, good questions. I, I don't know if I would call it a silver lining because I don't, I'm not really uh, wanting to ascribe any sort of positive stuff to COVID-19 because it's just rocked our world so hard in so many negative ways. However, unsurprisingly, the barista community has been really phenomenal about stepping up for one another. Um, because it is such a social group of people, they are uh, both in person and on social media. Now it's all on social media, it seems like. Um, and it's been amazing to see, for example, the movement of virtual tip jars. Mm -hmm. um, there, people have started them, you know, there's no playbook for this. And so we're seeing people uh, create their own solutions. Um, so where virtual tip jars had started one by one, and it was, it, it was immediately hard to wrap your arms around um, how how many there were out there, who was there, you don't wanna miss any. Um, Adam Jackson Bay uh, in Washington DC stepped up and created a database. Um, also, Slow Pour has been working with Coffee at Large in Seattle to create an actual database, which is phenomenal. If you wanna see that, I would go to Coffee at Large's Instagram page and they've got a link there. It lists every single virtual tip jar that they know about. Um, which I think is pretty incredible. And, uh, oh, there was one more I was going to say. Um, anyway, it, it, it just reminds me of sometimes in our coffee industry, someone has, is in a bike accident or someone's diagnosed with a terrible illness. And people in this community just, that's what they're used to doing is stepping up for one another. So I'm not surprised, but it's also really heartening to see how, how well people are taking care of each other. Yeah, I think that's super amazing. Um, you know, like as a former barista, I feel like baristas are such um, creative and wonderful individuals and come up with such amazing ways to help each other. So it's really great to hear that that's happening right now with the virtual tip jar um, campaigns. And we will definitely post links to those so that people who want to help can help out because um, we definitely want to support, um, you know, the whole supply chain, um, coffee farmers to people who are helping to brew the coffee during this time. Mm -hmm. um, so I also wanted to ask you about your Fuck COVID campaign. Um, it's been really powerful. I personally have really loved watching it. I think it's amazing to see these baristas and cafe owners and roasters from all over the world chiming in to show photos of how they're dealing with this um, crazy time. Um, can you tell us what your inspiration for the campaign was? Well, first of all, we, we're we not prudes here at Braced Magazine, but we also don't tend to use um, a lot of swear words because we don't really like to alienate anyone. Um, I think that it's possible to communicate without swear words effectively. Mm -hmm. But I started with that hashtag because I was so angry and I was seeing a lot of people feeling angry and one way that it can feel really empowering um, to harness your anger and use it uh, sort of as a force for positive is to take something that that 
you feel in danger of losing, whether it's your community or your team at, at your cafe or your ability to just lead your daily life going to work and going home, um, would be to, to use this hard hitting hashtag to uh, invite people to just send me photos of you being you and you and your awesome co-workers and you smiling and you pouring a beautiful latte and then it has also morphed now into okay a lot of you don't have jobs anymore or you're stuck at home um you're still worthy of being celebrated so i don't know it was i really wanted to engage with the coffee community it just started sort of as a whim a week ago saturday and i just invited people to send in photos and their company handles and and it's it was it's just been really amazing it i didn't realize how much time it was going to take every yeah. single day which is awesome but it's awesome it's my favorite part of the day when i sit down on the sofa in my living room and i look through these photos and i upload um the i don't know just all these messages of positivity from around the world we've gotten them from so many different countries it's fantastic uh, yeah, how many photos have you received so far? Do you know? Yeah, we've received more than a hundred. Um, ah. I haven't counted, but I think that it's close to 150. Wow. Um, and I have promised to people with this campaign that we'll post every single one that we get. So um, they will all eventually go out. They're coming in slower now. If people do want to keep sending them in, I will continue to post them. Um, but it I'm also saving them in the highlights section on our Instagram page. So if you just feel like flipping through all of them, they're all there. Cool. Such a good inspiration. Um, have you, do you feel like any have been like particularly emotional? It must um, kind of be a lot for you, like being so connected to this community um, and seeing all these photos. Um, is, what has that been like just for you to receive them? For the most part, it's been really heartening. Um, it's made me really, it has made me feel connected to the community. And I think that, and also reading, but sometimes they send little messages with them that'll say, you know, thank you for doing this to connect us with other people. It's really important. We feel so lonely. And so being able to see that we're kind of in this with the whole world um, is really, has, <clears throat> But that makes me feel connected too, because I'm here as as the magazine. Our responsibility is to to be that conduit, but I'm also feeling really lonely and cut off from the community, and so that it's personally been really helpful for me. Um, and some of the uh, some of the most ex cool ones, I don't know. Some people are sending in ones from like their holiday party or you know a time when they all did a 5K together or whatever which are awesome. It's great to see people who are all happy in a moment with their team. But I've also gotten some that are, you know, someone set up their camera to take a picture of just them because they're all alone in their cafe and they've, mm -hmm. they're the only person that their cafe can afford to have serving to go through the window. And, and that, that breaks my heart. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's so emotional. Um, yeah. So moving on from your campaign, I also wanted to ask you, um, as the owner of Barista Magazine and a professional journalist, um, how do you cover, you know, in this time, it seems like all we really talk about is COVID-19. You turn on the news or the radio and it's just um, everywhere. Um, how are you as a magazine um, writer and publisher, um, writing about other aspects of the community during this time? Do you postpone stories? Do you change the focus of stories to be um, about the story with COVID-19? That's a really good question. Um, and it's something that's been really frustrating for me personally, uh, given, so we've got two platforms. We've got our print magazine and Barista Magazine online. And we were just finishing up our April, May issue which is our 15th anniversary issue in which we were super stoked to give away at the SCA show and at MICE, thank you. Um, and I am really proud of the issue, but it was kind of too late by the time things started avalanching for us to change a lot of the content. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there are ads in that issue that say visit our SCA booth. It's just, it's, it's kind of all over the place, but it's, 
but I'm hoping that the content when it reaches people will give them something else to focus on for a little while. Um, we also extended all of our subscriptions by six months for free um, to all of our current subscribers, just because we, we want, we don't want people to have to worry about that and getting a glimpse into the community and also thinking about keeping your skills sharp, I think will be really empowering for people. As for Barista Magazine Online, this has been a big task for our online editor, Katrina. Um, she's been doing a fantastic job at posting because we post stories there five days a week, original stories. And we've really been trying to have the content be somewhat balanced. So having stuff about COVID-19 and its effects on our community, but then also having the stories about people in our community or things that are going on that are joyful and that are that are distracting but inspiring. So this week we had, or last week we had um, profiles of uh, Elika Lifty from Onyx Coffee Roasters, who was the new U.S. Brewers Cup champion, and then also with Lance Hedrick, also with Onyx, um, who placed second. And it, they're just talking about their experiences in the competition and as as champion brewers. We're not. We're not addressing COVID, and I think it's I think it's really important because I have gotten sucked into the news like crazy, and it can be so overwhelming um, that it's really mm -hmm. important I think to stop and do other things. I personally started rewatching Buffy the Vampire Slayer last night on Hulu, so it's <laughs> it's important to distract yourself as well as stay engaged with the community. Yeah, I totally agree. I brought home. Um an Ikawa roaster so that I could um, practice roasting and learn, kind of learn and hone that skill during this time. Cause I, that, yeah, if you get sucked in, it's just so hard. It um, is. So what are you hearing? Are you hearing any like common themes from uh, the barista world at this time? Um, just how they're, how they're coping or, um, you know, I guess a common theme is a lot of people are getting laid off, but are there any other things that you're hearing uh, the desires that they have or, or wants or things that baristas want people to know? Oh, well, one thing that's strange is that we're all in different stages around the world and also around the United States. So like it was only, I think, yesterday uh, that in Victoria and Australia that the government um, decided to tell all the cafes and restaurants and bars to go to takeout only, which is something that we in the States have been doing for a week, which doesn't seem that long, but in the, in COVID, it feels like a year. Um, yep. So it's, when I'm looking at my social media feed, I've got people from the States who are, who are seeming to settle in a little bit with what the new normal is. And then people in Australia right now are in as much panic mode as we were last week. So, mm -hmm. um, and those are big generalizations. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to generalize all of those populations, but just as a general theme, that's what I've seen. Um, I have been seeing fewer baristas online um, talking about their panic. I've been seeing more people talking about like the challenges, which is actually really cool. Like I challenge you to do this strange kind of push up, you know, 10 rotations of it. Mm -hmm. I challenge, Alex, Talon, blah, 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 and then they do it, and then they challenge more people. Um, Super anything, cool. It is, and anything from uh, a coffee-related thing or something like push-ups or, you know, I challenge you to bake this recipe from, you know, whatever, Anna Brown's book on Fika or something, and everybody <laughs> joins in and shares what they produce from this recipe. So. I have really liked seeing that, these really, really creative ways that people are connecting and sort of virtually hanging out. That's, that's really fantastic. Um, so with so many um, baristas being, um, you know, temporarily laid off or uh, laid off kind of indefinitely without a plan, um, do you think that a lot of them or a lot of the baristas that you know will want to uh, return to work or stay in coffee or be able to stay in coffee after this? Well, I think that the passionate people in our community absolutely want to get back into coffee. Um, it's been, 
<clears throat> really inspiring to see how many employers are handling layoffs in a really smart way in mm -hmm. terms of uh, laying them off so that they can collect unemployment. And there's hope that the Federal Reserves will supplement that. Um, so baristas will be able to carry through. I mean, we're all going to be tightening our belts. We're all going to be cutting back. Baristas are resilient. They can, they can do this. Um, it's possible. It's just, it's scary and it requires huge changes of lifestyle. But I do think that because of just how, uh, I don't know, how satisfying coffee work can be um, for both the social aspects and because of the, the actual complexity and amazingness of this product that I would say from what I've seen, they want to come back. They want this to be over. Um, if they have to pick up a job as a overtime person, relief person at a grocery store or, or I don't know, work in an Amazon warehouse or whatever, um, that sucks, but they're resilient. They'll, they'll get through this. I have to, I have to believe that. That's so fantastic. Um, and, you know, it makes me wonder, what is it like for the baristas who are still working right now? Um, you know, definitely we've heard some talk of service models um, kind of changing, especially here in the States. Um, could you tell us a little bit like how they're changing? And then maybe are you hearing um, our customers drink orders changing in the time of COVID-19? Do we live in a world of black coffee and nothing else? Or are people still... Um, seeking out espresso beverages and lattes and cold brews and all of that. I was actually asking a barista this question and she was telling me that she, her experience had been seeing um, uh, customers. So most of the people frequenting her cafe um, were regulars. So you're mm -hmm. not get, they're not getting many new customers. It's mainly the regulars who want to support the cafes and also want the normalcy that comes with going out and getting your regular coffee order. So she was saying most people are definitely sticking to what they're used to. They're not trying new things. Um, but as far as the work, uh, you know, most cafes that are doing takeout have uh, limited their hours severely. So I guess that's good in terms of fighting the loneliness if you're only open from 10 to 2 then that it's a lot easier to be alone for four hours with an intermittent customer here and there than it is for an entire shift but i think i i i'm surprised we here in oregon as you know just had the stay at home order put into place the other day and but coffee shops are still deemed one of the essential businesses so my hope is that please, the cafes and restaurants will continue to stay open for takeout um, because this is just like the, it's, it's a little bit of money. It's barely anything, but it's the little bit that is so important and is so important for maintaining that sense of normalcy that we don't have in very many other aspects of our lives right now. Absolutely. Um, I think that's really interesting what you mentioned about like the loneliness factor. I kind of assumed you were talking about loneliness at home, but um, I didn't even think about the idea of, um, you know, being at work and no one's coming by and you're there alone. And mm -hmm. that, that in and of itself is a scary thing, I think probably for employees at this time. Uh, the friend that I was talking to was saying she would stand there in the cafe and count the people just walking by on the street because there aren't very many and there's not really anything to do. You can only scroll through social media for so long. And, um, and it, and that made her feel really, especially lonely because she, she didn't expect people to come into the cafe very much, but just to see the streets so empty. I mean, it's yeah. really rough. Yeah. I know that I'm super appreciative for, um, for the cafes and roasteries around here that have been open, even just if they have um, bags of beans that it can, you know, grab, look at the beans, grab the one I want, purchase it, and then I can go brew coffee at home. It's been a mm -hmm. huge game changer for me. Um, I guess kind of the last thing I wanted to, one of the last things I wanted to ask you is um, the coffee world and the supply chain are all, um, are, are we're all so connected um, and affected by COVID-19. 
um, you know, from coffee farmers all the way to baristas. Um, what is what do you see as some of the best ways we can, as an industry and a community, support each other during this time? Can you imagine if this was happening before we were all so connected by the internet? I mean, I, I no. that is <laughs> no, I know it's just it's uh, it's unthinkable. Um, but because we do have these. Oh. I mean, you right now, Alex, are sitting across town from me in Portland, but mm -hmm. I have loved getting notes and talking to people who are halfway around the world. Um, this, in a weird way, this is something that connects all of us. It is something that every single person on the planet is worried about. Mm -hmm. um, so not that I want every us all to have something to worry about, but it is like a a completely a complete common denominator and there's something powerful about that so i think being connected saying talking about what we did today or what we're thinking as a creative opportunity for the coffee community to engage i, th I really would love to see more producers just recording little snippets and posting them to instagram um i I just want to see faces and see people talking. And I think that that's starting, but it will continue. Oh, that's my blue happy light. Let me turn that off. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just increasing amounts of engagement on, on social media, in, in emails to each other, in video messages. Cool. I think that's so wise for such a, a social industry like coffee. Um, yeah. So I just have two um, quick kind of rapid fire questions that I want to end with just, just for fun. Cause we can, okay. um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Hmm. I've thought about this. Flying. Ooh, flying. Yes. Uh, and then if you were a coffee drink, what kind of coffee drink would you be Sarah Allen? Goodness. I'd probably be a, uh, black coffee with a uh, little sugar in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or a dose of sarcasm, you know. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know that you are still so busy running Barista Magazine and doing everything that you can to support this community. Um, you know, as a member of the coffee community, thank you so much for all your work. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your time uh, that you spent talking to me.